2000 inductee Adrian Bonds Wallace, Connecticut's first female TV news anchor and the first African American female newscaster in New England. My entrance into television was really an accident. TV 13 brings you the Thursday edition of Eyewitness News with Bill Fitzgerald and Adrian Bonds, Dave Smith on sports, and Betty George with the weather. I needed a job, and that's why I started uh, in the business. My husband and I were going through a divorce. I needed work. I was going to school. I had a little boy. Good evening, and welcome to Eyewitness News. I'm Adrian Bonds. The worst and deadliest tornado onslaught to hit the nation in almost half a century continued today, with tis twisters claiming more lives in the southeast. And one of my neighbors said, listen, you ought to go over and audition at WAST in Albany. Uh, it's not going to hurt you. Who knows what will happen? It was a small station. It was one of those operations where you got to, to do everything. We were still doing film. That's how far back that was. ...declared disaster areas. We have a report on some of the hardest hit areas from ABC's John Drury. My first job was as an anchor producer, so I learned on the job. Was I interested in television? No, it really was expedience. I was interested in becoming a speech teacher, speech pathology and audiology, and then my life just sort of changed and went in a new direction. I think when I came to Channel 3, then it began to become a career. The first days at Channel 3 were wild days for me. First of all, it was interesting to observe the Washington Post to come into this market, and they really were not well received, in part because WFSB was owned by the Travelers Insurance Company. I'm the new kid that comes in the area. I don't know the marketplace. I'm a woman, and they're not really quite sure how to handle that. I don't know how much of it was about being an African-American woman. I mean, you could have that perspective. Even today, as I sit back and think about some of the early days of struggle, I can't really tell you whether it was about the issue of being a woman or if it was around the issue of being black. One thing I do recall is that the African-American community in Hartford at that time was very solid. But I also found that white women in the community were very supportive. You have to remember, this was during the 70s. We, there was the Women's Political Caucus. Then El Grasso ran for office. Some very exciting things were happening in the feminist movement in Hartford at that time. There were some tough times, uh, but the deal was that I was supposed to produce, write, and anchor the, the new news. Well, once I got there, people were not really totally comfortable with it. Now, that may have had something to do with a new producer that had been hired who said, I don't think that's going to work, and um, as a matter of fact, we're going to make this a co-anchor team. Al Terzi was the senior guy. I was a staff announcer, and only staff announcers could anchor the news. And then they had the news reporters, and we couldn't do any writing and they couldn't do any anchoring and so we had to read what they wrote and and all of these kinds of things were going on and and so we had to learn how to be journalists i'm the producer and the writer and he has to say what i what i have declared quote as news for that day um, so i think that there was some stress and a little bit of struggle she was my first co-anchor and it was new to her too uh... although she had had uh, more experience in the journalism end than i had uh... in a, in a more formal way and an educational background as well so Adrian coming, this was uh, really breaking new ground, and it was exciting uh, to be part of that. And as I got older, she also told me a, um, a lot of things that she had to endure on the job, but she really kept me shielded from a lot of the things that went on in the business that, or that were related to the business. And it wasn't until after she left the business before I really began to see how much stress she was under. There were some things going on relative to minority participation. People were allowed to play out some behaviors that were, I think, inappropriate and unfair, and folks were treated unfairly, and I'm not just saying I was. I'm just watching a pattern of activity. I couldn't reconcile myself around that, and then I found myself getting very angry. A lot of people outside of the station don't know what goes on inside of the station, but it's very, very difficult working in a local market and being a person of color. The people that was there for Adrian was the other people inside the station. Adrian would come to my office, shut the door, and sit down in front of me. And she would get very upset about some of the things that she just couldn't buy into. I remember in one situation where it was time for us to kind of go into negotiations with management at a station, and I was ready to go in, and of course I was that 
straight out of college, I know everything kind of person. And Adrian said, no, you're not going in there. You're not putting your career on the line because you've got a whole career in front of you. And she was the kind of person that would put herself out because she was thinking of my career first. Just another reason. She's a giver, not a taker. The station and my colleague, Adrienne Bonds, announced today that Adrienne will be leaving us later this year to pursue other interests. Adrian, I was very much concerned about my son. I really wanted to move in another direction. I don't see myself coming back to television news as we know it today. And that completes this edition of Eyewitness News. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tonight at 11. Good night. I love making material come alive, if I believe it. I like training. And I know sometimes training material can be very, very boring. And But, you know, if you can bring it alive and it's something... I don't know, it just sort of seemed to happen naturally for me. I enjoyed that. FedEx was exciting, IBM. But Aetna has, has always been a good friend of mine. As a matter of fact, I think I was probably one of the first women that they used back even in as, as late as the 70s. I remember doing dental and medical pieces for them. Uh, <laughs> So now I do retirement benefits. I wonder if that speaks to my age or whatever. She has a beautiful voice. Uh, it, it's a very silky and a very soothing voice. Sometimes I look at the type of material that she has to read and I think there's no way anyone in the world could make this sound good. And she's just, she's a pro. She's an absolute pro. There's a host of projects that we'd be involved in. And you'd always look for the right host. And Adrienne Boz would be one that always comes to the forefront. Uh, she is the Q word, quality. I have to like the material. So that's why I haven't gone into the voiceover business or do any of the commercial stuff. If I don't believe it, I can't sell it. Once again, welcome to Edna. If I think about uh, Adrian functioning in the 1990s, I don't think I would have done very well. Uh, I look at the Clinton and Monica Lewinsky debacle. I was just appalled and offended. Uh, my, my heart went out to what I consider the old line journalist that had to say some of the trash that they had to report on. I would have been fired because I would have refused to do that. Um, that's not to, to romanticize the old days because they had their problems too. News was news at that time. There was a narrow perspective. There still is a difference in how stories are handled in, in the minority community versus in the uh, mainstream community. Uh, I don't like what news has become, these little 30-second sound bites and the lack of depth, uh, more the entertainment. And I look at what our young women are seeing, you know, I'm not going to fit these messages that come out. Unless I'm thin, unless I'm blonde, unless I'm this, and I'm, unless I'm rich, unless I'm that. You're not allowed to have your own personality, to have individual thoughts. We're not all the same woman. But where's the diversity of what women are? So we need to change that. And I guess maybe it'll happen with the next generation. I'm kind of old and tired now. <laughs> when I think of Adriana, I think of that commercial that they used to have on for the pastry items. Nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. Nobody doesn't like Adriana Vaughn's. Even though it's been 18 years since she's been gone, people have said, whatever happened to Adrian, when is she coming back? She's not at all pretentious. It, you know, what she is is what she is, and it's an absolutely warm, wonderful woman. I would describe my mother as brilliant, humble. Um, I mean, I don't want to overstate, but in my mind, the perfect individual. Part of her special quality was that she didn't know how special she was. And that's why she came across as she did. And that's why she remained humbled all these years. You look for somebody that has credibility. And Adrienne Bonds was one that brought credibility to the small screen. She has one of the most beautiful souls that I know. And in this business, to keep a soul like that is really a challenge. I've been blessed, honey. I, I really have been blessed. Yes, yes.